Hi there! In this video I am going to show you how to put together the Barbecue Shack, which is a little gift box um, from Simply Crafty SVGs. So I always like to get the small PC out of the way or panels. You see this one, it looks like it should be that way, but it's like that. So we're just going to piece together this little title if you choose to use it. Of course you could add your own. But we're going to go ahead and put together these the little fork and barbecue thing. So I just had a little sticky thing. I'm using a pick-me-up tool, but it, a little sticky at the end got a little bit uh, pushed in. It's kind of like that stuff that you put on the wall if you never used it, where it kind of sticks to the wall. It helps stick things to the wall. It's just a little thing at the tip that kind of sticks on there. So you had a little spatula and a little fork. Just put them together. And you could use this for other projects too because you could actually size it up. Put it on a card or something like that. Not not the barbecue shack of course, but I mean I guess you could, but um, but at least you could reuse these little barbecue tools for other projects. Then we're just going to layer these, the spatula and the fork onto these, the back piece. And we have the little K there because um, it, when you put this together you can't really see the full K so we just want to make sure we can add that on top after this. And I just want to make sure it's lined up, the holes are lined up best you can. I was a little bit off but you couldn't really tell on the bottom. So just trying to line it up to the back piece. And then just to make sure that we get the right effect, I'm just adding a little K. You probably don't have to, but I like the look of it better. So then we'll go ahead and do the barbecue section, or section, the barbecue cut. We'll put those on last, but we just want to get this over with first. Not over with, but I like to do the small pieces first so I can concentrate on the actual build of the box. And this act this actual box is, is um, something I did for a personal project. It emulates a actual barbecue shack that was built with pallets uh, in my yard, actually. So now that we have that done, we're going to go on to the box portion. We're going to put the panels on first, but I'm just showing you how you should fold the pieces on the score lines. Make sure you get some crisp folds, whether you use a bone folder or anything like that. So now we're going to add the panels. So this is the back one. This is a little back window in the back. Did I say it's in the back? It's in the back. So I did emboss the panel first. I will have the embossing information available in the product description um, and also in the notes below in this video. Just want to line that up. It'll line up perfectly. Usually when I'm doing things like this I like to reach in if there's a hole to make sure it's lined up. Sometimes I, my panels have a little bit of give around the holes. Um, it, that'll be true about the doors and the windows. And then after that I'll put the the border. So I'm just moving that over a little bit. Now you could put a fine line of glue on the actual project rather than the border. Sometimes I do that just in case I have a case of the dropsies that day. Just going to line it up. So now that we've got that done, we're going to go on to the larger piece. The reason why I want you to put them on this way, especially around the doors and windows, um, because there is a little bit of give. Um, what I mean is to put a little space so there's a little bit extra space in the right and left of the windows where it bends back so you don't get too close to that fold. So you, when you put this on you want to line it up to the right opening edge. So if you can see in there I'm just lining up 
this right edge here to the right edge of the opening and there there's a little gap on the left but that's just to give you um, the ability to still open it without hindrance the same thing with the border or the trim I should say it'll be similar it's a little bit tighter but you still want to match it up to the right edge I mean obviously it's really not a huge functional the openings just for looks but um, you want to be still be able to bend it back a little bit so try not to get that left side too close to you can always pull open the doors before putting it on but you want to make sure it still opens so I didn't do that I would I'll do that in the next step but just fold them up first it'll be the easiest way to do it then we'll put these little door panels on and you'll see that they're different shapes so make sure you have the right shape and what I did is I just embossed it the opposite so it looks like there's wood planks going across on the door and window fronts of course you could do whatever you'd like I kinda wanted to look more rustic because that's what it looks like right now but you know what's fun about this one is that you don't have to make it a barbecue shack you could actually um, make it a pretty box if you added some you know colorful pattern paper for the side panels and the doors so it could essentially be like a little she shack with the right paper I ended up doing it more um, not masculine but more true to life what it is with wood but um, I do envision maybe I'll make one in the future where I make it with um, floral papers and it, it would be pretty so you can see I just pulled open the windows so that will be helpful when you're putting on the panels And just slowly line it around there and there is some give on the left and right of the the windows for the purpose I told you so you could fold them back a little bit now after I get all the panels and the trim on um, I will be adding a few holes uh, with my paper piercer to um, add some brads for door basically door handles or door knobs you can say knobs or handles I made them all the same size for the windows and the doors but I purposely didn't add any holes into the design so you can personalize it the way you wanted to so I'm getting on this last window pattern panel and sorry about that I hurt my finger so fortunately I washed my hands a lot so that's why you have to see kind of a ratty uh, um, band-aid on my finger but it's anyways rather than that then you see what is underneath there so other than the roof we've got all the side panels on we're gonna wait to put on that barbecue shack title until later so here's my little embellishment bowl and I'm just dumping out um, these little hinge pieces I just eyeball it and place them in little things. It would be good black too. I just use metallic to match the roof, which is the way the file is uh, set up, but you could always change the color. So you can see I did that as well on the windows. So I had two on each side of the window and a um, total of four on the doors. So once we finish this, I'll just go on and put the hinges on the door. So I already put a couple on there. So again, uh, you know, you could choose to put only two, but um, I made them all the same size to make it easy to cut. In actuality, they're a little bit different size. But now I'm going to put these brads on. So I've already put on the one for the door, and I just used a paper piercer and eyeballed where I wanted them. You can see the holes in there. Then we'll just go ahead and 
open up that brad on the other side or you could put something like a, a rhinestone especially if you make it a pretty version or an elegant version um, or I mean there's so many embellishments that you can use you can use nouveau drops you could use uh, like a lot of people use melted perler beads which I do so there you go so that's just a little extra embellishment and then we're gonna put on this roof so the roof kind of centers it, it overlaps on every side so you can kind of eyeball it to see you can see the equidistance on the left and right and then whatever overhang you want on the front and back so I just kind of eyeballed it um, it's up to you what your preference is. If you want to do more of an overhang on the front, you can do that as well. But you just kind of want to dry fit it to see what looks best to you. Then once you're re ready, just go ahead and glue that on. So we're going to add the glue on this, not, not on the actual panel. Because it is overhang. I mean, you can try to, but you'd have to put it right smack in the middle. You just don't want uh, leakage from the glue. So it's going to start that way, but it's just e easier to do when it's upside down. So you can see the edges. Make sure it's situated the correct way as well. So it's going to be longer um, left to right than it is up and down here. So I had a pretty large overhang on the back. And that overhang's great because it helps you to open the box when it's uh, completed. So now we have that, we're going to go ahead and assemble the box. So you want to glue this back piece on with that bottom tab. And I'm just gluing the tab onto the bottom and just aligning that edge to the inside fold. And then you see this is how it's going to come together. You could either glue the sides first or the bottom. Um, it's up to you, but I'm going to do the sides first. But you could do it from the bottom to the sides, but you want to glue them on the inside so you can't see the tabs. So if you find it's better, easier for you to do the bottom first, you can do that too. So I just kind of get it in place, make sure it lines up with the other edge. That edge is lined up to the tab fold. And I have some excess glue, so I'll wipe that off. I have a little wet paper towel nearby that I wipe it off on. Once you have it aligned, you can go ahead and flip it over and apply pressure to the tab. I do that a lot. If it's square it's real easy and if you can get your hand in there. If you can't get your hand in there I, I often use a wooden uh, takeout chopstick. They're cheap. I have them. They're handy. And they reach into places my hands sometimes can't get to. So okay, again, lining that up, and like I said, you could do the bottom first and then do the sides. That's up to you. It might be better for you. I mean, it might have been better for me too, but so I have a little wet paper towel. Had a little excess. That was a brand new bottle of Scotch Tacky Glue, so when it's new, it comes tends to come out a little thicker and faster. And then we'll add glue to those bottom tabs. I do one at a time. Fold them up because I have to reach in. So that's where the benefit of maybe doing that first. It'll be easier to reach in to apply pressure. Sometimes I go one direction in a video and there's several ways to do it. With any square box you can pretty much, as long as you know where the tabs go, you can do it in any order that works for you. So I just now I'm going to use the chopstick to apply pressure because it's hard for me to get my hand into there. Just to make sure those bottom tabs are good and secure. And I don't have a tab to cover that at all because it's really not necessary. Let me just go ahead and you just flip that in. That's how the box closes and opens. 
So now we're just going to take our little fine tip uh, glue applicator with our glitter glue and uh, glue on that barbecue shack title. So again, you could have put anything on the front. You could actually put your own uh, word frame or label, whatever it is. So I like this little applicator because I can do it really fine. And you can just do little dots. You don't want the glue bleeding in the front. So also you could use, I, and I didn't even think about this to say this earlier, but you could use vinyl for the shack part if you wanted to. The bar, the actual shack. Uh, I mean, it would be a little bit different piecing together uh, with vinyl than it would cardstock. But if with your machine, if you um, have I intricate cut sec setting like uh, Cricut does, or I, well, I actually cut this on an Eclipse, but I've also cut these kind of designs on a Silhouette. So you just have to sometimes doing it a little bit slower. You have to find the sweet spot for your machine and to do these little intricate paper cuts. And that finishes off the box. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, it was fun for me to create. It was a while ago, but um, I'm finally putting it out in the store. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I thank you so much for watching. And if you'd be so kind, it would be great if you liked this video to like it below. Give me the thumbs up. And thanks for watching.